Hey, this is Tony of the Intentional Trader. I'm the head trader, head moderator, guy that develops the software. I developed the system, and I did all of that because I was not having any success with other trading systems, with other trading rooms, with other moderators, with other things. So I, I kind of uh, met a group of friends online and other trade rooms. We started trading together on Skype. And uh, as it turns out, during that time, I kind of developed a trading system and I started sharing it with them. Next thing you know, they're, they're trading it and it became something that um, really wasn't intentional. It was uh, something that just kind of happened organically. And so as I started trading uh, or, or teaching them this system, we, we created a trade room so I could make it easier to teach. Then I started creating indicators so I could make it easier for them to understand what it was I was trying to tell them. So this was a very organic type of thing. This was not something where I thought, you know, like a lot of these guys that, that do what I do here, they think, oh, this looks like a good way to make a lot of money. I'm going to teach uh, people how to trade. It's, it was really quite the opposite. So here I am now trying to just at least help you to understand what it is that I came up with and how it took my stuck trading career and kind of launched it because I changed my perspective on on trading okay so we're gonna go with uh, we're gonna start moving on and we're gonna try to help you go ahead and get everything launched right from the beginning right from starting today okay so here's a spreadsheet that I have done to help people understand now what we do at the intentional trader and second brain trading we trade for very small profits we trade for five ticks and then we're done okay and and we have an awful lot of information on how and why we do that I'm gonna go over some of that with you here today but as you can see if you start trading one of these either five dollar instruments or ten dollar instruments by the way we trade futures and so the futures instruments the the e-minis um, there are many five dollar and ten dollar trades okay so if you start adding lots to these trades, you can see that those very small trades can easily add up to a decent income on a day-to-day -day basis. So my theory is do something very small and simple. Do it very well, which means how do you, how do, you do things very well? You practice right just like anything else you get good at you practice and you do it over and over and over again and your mission is to become the best in the world at doing that very small thing okay so that's the whole premise behind what we do here at second brain trading it's very small and it's very simple all right, so let me show you what small and simple looks like. Here is a video. So here's a day in our trade. This is our trade room. This is what you will see in our trade room if you wanted to come and visit us or you're ready to go ahead and get started in the trade room. You're going to see something that looks like this. This is our regular everyday trade room. And this is our daily video. Now we had several trade setups on this particular day. This is exactly what a trade, and I'm going to show you these things exactly. Here's what I'm going to show you. Price is channeling. Price breaks out of a channel. We have these indicators pop up that say we have an opportunity. By the way, that's my arrow right there showing you, talking to the trade room about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Okay, so we have a, uh, a confluence of indicators that suggest something's going to happen. Let me back that up a little bit. And sure enough, it does happen. Okay, all we needed was a small drop there. So that was the first winner that day. We have another confluence of indicators here. Okay, so the entry 
for our trade was on the open of this bar and we shorted it based on this look at all these indicators right here we had a confluence of indicators that said okay everything is in place for price to drop here okay and so we placed a short order here and that was a winning plus five trade for us so a little bit later in the in the trade room all right so here's a here's another one this is the CL this is the uh, the oil futures okay so up here we have a confluence of conditions we've broken out of a channel we have a confluence of conditions this bar opened notice when this bar opens I'm going to just let it open on its own notice how many indicators we have suggesting price is about to do something and there it is so that was a buy or I mean a sell order okay this is what I'm about to show you okay this is a this is what we're going to be talking about today now so I'm going to ask you in today's market what makes more sense trend trading for larger targets now if you're a trend trader what do you think about trading on a day like this especially if your particular trade entry is somewhere around here that says you know uh, maybe after uh, a breakout of this particular trend that you put on a buy order here now you're doing this all day and may and your targets up here so have you already gotten stopped out have you already panicked and gotten out this is what we have to deal with in a trending market most of us trade small lots one two contracts maybe maybe three or four and we're supposed to manage our emotions during periods of, of trading like this until price hits that target personally I found that exceedingly difficult so instead I decided to try to figure out what's going on just before price changes directions it seemed to me to make more sense that if I could figure out why price stopped and changed directions here and here and here and here if I could read what was going on just before that happened I might be able to find that edge that I had not been able to find for seven years All right so here's the reality most traders are still doing things the old way most traders still believe that the trend is your friend and you got to follow the trend and all of that there's not a lot of information out there about what's going on in the modern markets and why because the people that own these big machines that pay for these big machines don't really want you to know they go to a lot of trouble to keep you from knowing exactly what's going on but this is the reality and this is what most of us are, are trying to do so we've got to try to change that reality now going back to those of us that are trying to trade this trend and why it's very difficult single or small lot traders really struggle with it even though the conventional wisdom says the trend is your friend it's nearly impossible for single contract or small lot traders to manage their emotions during the trend during this type of you know if you if you sold over here somewhere and your expectation was to 
I'm sorry, buy over here somewhere, and your expectation was to exit here. What kind of emotions are you going through when you're holding one or two contracts, especially when you're down here? You just want to bail out, right, and, and mitigate your losses. You don't necessarily going to hang in there. Um, or when you're up here, you're thinking, oh, I've got profits. I should exit now because I'm profiting. No, I'm not supposed to exit now because I, price is supposed to go up here somewhere. So you this is nothing but emotion. And this is where I struggled and failed completely for seven years. Statistically speaking, you will never succeed at overcoming your emotions as it relates to trading like this. Okay? So I decided I was going to stop trying to. All right? And instead, I decided that, you know, we've got to figure out a better way. And if I can figure out what the market makers are doing, then I'm then I, at least I might know when to stay out of the markets. You can't outsmart or outwit these guys. They already know what you're thinking. They know what's going on in the markets. They control the markets. They create the markets. Okay? That does not mean there are not opportunities for us. But we've got to change our perspective. Okay? So how are we going to do this? We're going to start with step one. Start small and be consistent. Remember what I said at the beginning. Do something very small. Do it very, very well. Practice it over and over and over again. And be the best in the world at that thing. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, don't change from that. Because once you get good at something in trading, once you have an edge, you need to stick with it. Don't change it. How many of you have been in trade rooms where it, you know, they sell you on what a great edge they have? They keep changing how they go about trading. They keep changing the rules. They keep changing what it is exactly they're trying to do. You may notice over here, got 10 years. For 10 years we've been teaching everybody the same thing for 10 years because this doesn't change. We're telling you the same message we've been telling for 10 years. The thing is, though, is, is there's so much more information out there that's being regurgitated by these companies that come along and they just, they're looking for a way to, you know, make a living at teaching, trading, or whatever. So they just keep regurgitating the same information over and over and over again. What I'm asking you to do is do a fundamental change and how you're approaching trading, what your assumptions about trading are. I'm looking for a paradigm shift. That's what happened to me. And I don't, you know, it didn't really come to me necessarily um, in little bits. It was kind of an epiphany I had. And we're going to actually talk about that next week. I've got a another event that we're doing next week that uh, um, we'll send you an invitation for. And we'll talk about this epiphany that I had and how I turned that into what we're doing today in our trade room every day. So what is a pullback trade? I'm going to show you another video. Let's see, hopefully this one will not, um, uh-oh, oh, shoot, let me go back. I like to show you videos rather than 
static charge. For a number of reasons, but not the, the least of which is that you cannot study or develop a trading system with static charts. That's another assumption about trading that so many people get wrong. And I know this because I'm like the president of faulty assumptions and expectations as it, as it relates to trading. I had them all. And I believed everything I read in forums and I saw on YouTube. But when I sit and watch trading day by day by day, and I sit and watch charts, I realize there are opportunities you will never see on a trading chart. And, and here's what I mean. So on this bar right here, I'm showing this one because it's the biggest one in the square. On this bar right here, what do we know about this bar? We know four things about this, uh, five things about this bar. What do we know about this bar, anybody? What is this? What, is, what do we know here? And there's only four pieces of information on this bar. Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? anybody what do we know that what are the five pieces of information that we know about this bar okay that's four yep there's one more yep okay there's five okay so we got it that's it so how did this bar form can you tell me how this bar formed the price action inside it's only a one minute bar so if it's a very fast bar how did this form? Did price run up here and pull back? Did price open and drop down to here? Did price open, pull all the way up, and then kind of hang out down here, go up? and You don't know. You don't know. So how do you use static charts to find an edge? You can't. Not nowadays. Not anymore. So what I've done is I, I decided I was going to, I was never going to use static charts again to find an edge. And instead I'm going to use video. I videotape every minute of every trading day. And I review those videos every single day. It's amazing how much more you can learn from a video than you can learn staring at a static chart. When you realize how bars are built. You guys sit and watch charts every day. Each bar, if I had a bar that looks like that, two of them side by side, you have no idea how that bar was built or what was going into that bar. So I watch video. So let's watch a video. Here's what we do every day. See this channel right here? Price isn't doing anything much, right? Price is just channeling. There's nothing for us to do. And then it breaks out of that channel. Suddenly, something interesting has happened. So what we want to do is we want to see how hard price is breaking out of this channel. Look at this channel. And then a, a very sudden move got my attention. Okay? No longer. Something is happening. Time for me to start measuring what's going on. We have very strong momentum. That's these bars that go from black to almost white. Then we have an oversold condition which suggests that the sellers are becoming exhausted. Okay? No more sellers available for the, at this level. It's getting even more momentum, even stronger, even fewer sellers at this level now. 
You see this speed tick right here? This is what we call a speed tick. There is an awful lot going on inside this one little signal. This little speed tick suggests that this particular bar has orders going through it at a rate that us retail traders are unable to trade. Okay? That the orders are being processed. And when I say orders, I don't mean orders like the, uh, the, uh, uh, the orders on your trading dome, you know, and the uh, uh, level two stuff, you know, the book orders. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the processed orders that have actually been processed through the exchange are being processed at a rate that is highly unlikely that us retail traders could trade that fast because of our ability, right? We don't have the ability to do that. We don't have the computers. Um, here's a, think of the um, speed tick as a speedometer, Dwayne. So if price goes from zero to 100 miles an hour, there is some extreme acceleration during that period of time, but we're only going to register it here when it hits 100 miles an hour. That makes sense? That make it easier to understand? Okay. So we're, we're killing it, right? And pr now we know. The big boys are interested. They're doing something. We already know that there is extreme momentum. And what do we know about momentum? You cannot maintain momentum in trading. It will stop and turn around. That's how trends are built. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Okay? See this right here? This is our pullback alert. Again, an awful lot of technical analysis is going on inside this dot. This dot, the intention of this dot is to filter out all the information that we that that is available and only put the best information for you right in front of your eyes. So down at this support line, the buyers are sitting down here just waiting. And once price starts getting down here, you saw how that pullback alert, let me back up, before price got down there, okay, no pullback alert, right? Now, as soon as price gets down there and hits down here, look what happened. We just found the buyers. We just found where the buyers were sitting and waiting for the sellers to push price down here. The buyers feel like this is a value area. So they're going to start buying. Okay, buyers are laying in wait. Now, sellers have pushed it down here. We've gotten oversold. We know this bar was manipulated. We also know that momentum, it, we have divergence here. We have divergence of between price and momentum. Momentum has actually shifted directions here. Divergence, as far as I'm concerned, I've been doing this for about 10 years. Divergence and price action together are the most powerful indicators in trading. But, up until recently, when I came up with this indicator, I think, divergence is difficult to understand and read. There's a lot of gray areas in divergence. So we created a yes-no indicator for divergence that is the best, and, and I'm only saying that because I keep being told that, the best indicator to signal divergence in trading.
Okay, we've combined that with the rock, the uh, speed tick, and the obos indicator to create this rock star. This rock star tells us when everything lines up, we have a real strong potential for price doing something different, for price changing directions. This is not random. This is not theory. This is thousands and thousands and thousands of data set points to determine that when all of these conditions exist at the same time, this is when price changes directions. So I studied that for a long time, wanting to know why price changes directions and when does it happen. And that's our second brain trading system. That's what we're looking for. Okay? So why are these pullbacks give us such an edge? They're predictable. You know, trends can go on and on with no obvious point of entry. Pullbacks happen over and over and over throughout the trend. The pullback part of a trend is predictable. The entries are very precise. I mean, to the tick, you know what your point of entry is and how to manage that trade. There's no real difficult chart patterns to decipher and to figure out, oh, this kind of looks like a head and shoulders. This looks like I might, this might be a good. You know, I studied all those for a long time, and I believed in them for a long time, and they work great right until they don't. And they're very difficult to trade unless you're trading in hindsight, unless you're studying static charts. Then it makes a lot of sense. You go, oh, yeah, of course. Look, that worked perfectly. If you're looking back at static charts, how many times can you say, oh, this particular chart pattern failed? Well, you really can't because the chart pattern never actually developed. So there's nothing to, to decipher here. And the rules that we design around these trades are really easy to, to design. Um, and the nice part is, is they're generally ignored by most retail traders. Why? Because most retail traders are trying to trade based on historical charts, static charts. Okay? I actually highlighted in the trade room today, I don't have a video of this, but I highlighted in the trade room today. We all took a trade in the trade room. Everybody took it. It was a winner. But if you had viewed it on a static chart, you never would have seen it. Okay? So we've identified this area that's kind of hidden to most other traders. So it's generally ignored by most other traders. We also have a very small drawdown potential. Limited market exposure is extremely important to me. The less time I give the, the sharks that are swimming in the waters, the guys who have a lot more money than me and a lot smarter than me, the less time I give them to take my money, the better. So if I limit my exposure to them, I'm in a better place, all right? which makes it a much more relaxing trading environment. And this is easily quantifiable with the confluence of multiple indicators. If you saw our presentation on Thursday, remember the one where everybody's holding their hand up, where all of these different data sources all say the same thing. They're all suggesting that something is about to change. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like with and without indicators. Okay, so on the left, 
no indicators. This would be very easy for you to just sit and be watching a chart and have no idea what's going on. On the right, we've got our confluence indicators. So let's look at this. This is real sensitive. We have a speed tick. We at the open of the bar. We have a rock star. This this. Uh, this, uh, this text here is our Super D indicator. We have our momentum. Look at this push. Look how hard price is pushing before it pulls back. That strong push is a big heads up for us. Different trade setup, although it looks exactly the, almost exactly the same, right? Look how hard our push drop down is. Oversold, speed tick, pullback alert, open of the bar is a speed tick. We put our order on at the open of the bar and we get this pullback. Now, what happens after the pullback? I have no idea. We have a slip spot, which is where we trade. Remember that little graph I showed you at the beginning? where we're looking for plus five ticks. I don't know if this is a reversal or if this is a typical per pullback. But what I'm trying to do is find what's most typical. And a pullback, a regular pullback, is most typical. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay? So look. Look at the hard push. Our momentum is going from black to almost white. On the open of the bar, we have a rock star. I shorted it right here. And I can show you dozens and do um, hundreds of these. In fact, go to our trade of the day videos on YouTube and you'll see hundreds of these. Or at least over a hundred. So here's what we do. We've got a, in our trading room, we open from 9 to noon a.m. Eastern Time every day, Monday through Friday. We trade the, uh, the E-minis. We've got the, uh, the ES, the NQ, the YM, the RTY, the CL, and the GC. We trade for five ticks. We're looking at a five tick stop, but we generally manage our stop. If the, if the conditions that got us into the trade change, we're going to manage our stops smaller. So it's not uncommon for us to take a break even uh, on a trade. Can you give some insight on the number one pullback in the middle of that bar? Yeah, that was the pullback alert. There are, there are different types of price action inside of a bar. And there's what's called churning. There's what's called a climax bar. There's what's called what's a, a bar that has churning and a climax bar together. So a one is a churning bar. A two is a climax bar. A three is a churning climax bar. Okay. Um, we have documentation. We have online documentation that will clarify that with for you to some degree. So we've developed this uh, this trading system for NinjaTrader. It's optimized for NinjaTrader 8. We provide education programs and tools. We have online support. We have both a help desk and web chat. We've, uh, we're about to launch our peer mentoring program. Lots of NinjaTrader tools. So that's kind of what we do. We also have a huge video archive. And uh, if you are looking for something specific, let us know, and uh, we'll get that over to you. If you want to see some of our, our uh, videos, there's a link to our YouTube page, and you'll see just hundreds of videos there. All right, and the nice thing is, is we've been doing this for like 10 years, so you'll notice if you look at a really old video that we're still doing the same thing we did 10 years ago. 
So all we're looking for is simplicity. We're looking for real-time indicators that give us information about the data that's coming in right now. This gives us very specific information, very specific points of entry, no gray areas. That's, that's what killed me. Now, don't be concerned about indicators. I've heard some people say, oh, you have all these indicators, and it's very confusing. Do you realize you look at indicators every single day? And an indicator is not something that you really need to worry about. An indicator only tells you what the current condition is. And if there's a condition that needs to be addressed, then you then you address it. They're not intended to, intended to alarm you. They don't make decisions for you. Like the car doesn't just shut down if you reach too many RPMs, right? But it'll let you know you've reached too many RPMs. It, it doesn't generate any type of action. They are there to inform you that a condition exists if that condition is something that you care to know about. So, and that condition may or may not warrant some kind of action. So here's a condition, here's an indicator, here's a condition. This is an indicator of danger. This danger is causing these people to react. Now, this is a still image, right? I know many of you have already seen this before. This is a still image. But I can tell you right now, I know exactly what every one of those people did right after the danger passed. And you can too, if you think about it. Unless you got hit in the head with it, you know what these people did after the danger had passed. And that's all we do. We wait for the, for the danger to pass. We know what the reaction of that danger is going to be, and we react to that. So here's a, here's a typical trend, right? And during this typical trend, we have areas of low interest or accumulation or distribution. Then if you solve Thursday, uh, Tuesday's event, you know, we've got where the momentum traders are buying and they're selling. And then the freight train effect causes price to get at or over value. And then price pulls back. Right? Based on the information I gave you on Tuesday. And it happens over and over again. Go look at any chart. Go look at a chart. Go look at a chart with a trending chart. And tell me if you find one that doesn't have some semblance of this. Alright, so if we look at that, there's our edge right there. That edge, that little pullback, that thing you will never find staring at static charts. That little pullback is our edge, and it's a strong edge. So there's just four things you need to know. to trade our system. Just four things. First, we need to know when is price breaking out of a channel. That's when you wake up, right? That's when you're sitting there, you're bored, which is what mostly trading is. You're sitting there bored. Price breaks out of a channel. When is price being manipulated after it breaks out of that channel? When does price become exhausted? And when has momentum shifted directions? When we can put together those four things into a single confluent bit of information, we've got a trade setup. And, and more times than not, it's a winning trade setup. All right, for those of you that hung out with us, 
we really appreciate it. Um, I want you to know that we've been at this for over 10 years doing the same thing. So as you can imagine, we've got a ton of references. We've got a ton of nice things that people have said about us, testimonials, ratings. And here's the most important thing. If you go and Google us, we've been around for 10 years. If you Google us, you're not going to find anything, any negative information about us. We've, we've been really solid for 10 years doing this. You can't keep doing something for 10 years if you're not seeing some success. Right? Now, I mentioned that we've got these specials. All right? Okay, so again, thanks for hanging in there with us. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day. Come hang out with us. We hope that you're going to be a, a new trader with us very soon. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.